Welcome back. Well, I was at Bedford today, got incredibly lucky, and fell into a couple of great sales. Um, oh, also, I have company with me. Uh, do you want to say hi? No, he doesn't want to say hi. He just wants to be snuggled. Uh, so, when we come back, I'm going to show you the booths where I got the best goodies. So, we'll be back in a minute. Audie has departed. Um, he wanted cuddle, he wanted attention, and when I was not prepared to focus absolutely on him, he left for greener pastures. Um, by greener pastures, it's the open window where he can look at birds, but I expect he'll be back. So I was not even in Bedford for five, ten minutes when I fell into a, a sale. One of the dealers apparently acquired a collection of Satsuma pieces, uh, very, very pretty uh, uh, Japanese pieces. They're, um, they're, they're just lovely, very specific style, and Satsuma refers to the design. So when you get a chance to see it, that's what Satsuma looks like. So. Let's take a look at what I found. This is a little booth we don't come into very often. But interestingly enough, I've gotten some very good deals in here. So maybe we should come in a little more often because frankly, today is no exception to the good deals. We have a whole batch of Satsuma here. Um, vase, five dollars. This little pot, which is probably an incense burner or incense holder, five dollars. And all the rest of these are five dollars each. So, the larger vase and the little pot here in my hand are definitely coming with me. I will probably pick out one or two of the nicer vases and take them. Uh, but this goes back to what I was saying before here. Let me put this up. Just so you can see. $5, $5, $5, right down the line. Sometimes you just don't know why people price things out the way they do. I would certainly price this vase out at twice as much as I would the smaller ones. Same thing with the little pot. But fortunately for me, the dealer is not doing that. So naturally, I'm going to take advantage and I'm going to go through and get the nicest of our $5 pieces. <sighs> I have to say, I love dealers who do this with their pricing. So as you can see, there were many pieces there. Um, I'm guessing maybe 10 or more. Uh, first thing I did, because they were all priced the same, all $5, I simply grabbed the two best pieces. Uh, that was the larger vase. I'm guessing that's about five inches. And then the little incense pot or incense burner. Took those, like those are going to come home with me. And that's what you saw in the film. Um, then I took a look at the rest of the pieces to see if there was something special I might like to take from the rest when I had a chance to to look over them carefully after I stuck the goodies I wanted into my bag. Uh, but I love dealers like this. I'm assuming 
the dealer simply acquired a collection of Satsuma somehow or other, perhaps an estate sale, who knows, and then just said five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, um, without regard for the actual value of the individual pieces. There could be a number of reasons for that. It could be a dealer who's not really familiar with Japanese porcelain. It could be that the dealer simply had a lot of items from this particular acquisition and needed to get them priced to move them out. It could be that it's just a dealer who, who deals in quick turns. Or frankly, it could be that the dealer made a bargain on the collection and decided to pass it off onto their customers. Doesn't matter. I got a good deal. So then um, after that, I turned my attention to the remaining pieces to see if there was anything in particular that I might like to take out of the smaller vases. And I did find one. Well, this is the one that is coming with me. As you can see, it's smaller than most of the others, but it's very nicely painted. And as I mentioned before, I have a frequent buyer who loves this sort of little thing. So this is going to go in uh, to her next purchase as a little thank you gift. But I wanted to show you this too. It's Mark Shawnee, and, and it may well be, I, I will probably look it up when I get home. A very nice lamp, uh, Chinese woman, $12. I'm going to think about that. It's a nice piece, figural lamps sell, and this is a very, very mid-century figural lamp. So, do I think I'd have difficulty selling it? Not at all. But, as I say, I'm going to think about it because, you know, it's over my $10 price limit. Now, the little vase I selected from the other pieces, uh, after I pulled out the first two that I wanted, those pieces were all roughly the same size, roughly the same style. But one of them did stand out to me as being a little nicer than the others. That's the one I took. It was among the smallest pieces, so bigger is not necessarily better. I based my selection on the execution, the amount of gilding, and by the way, there's usually a relationship between the amount of gilding and the quality of the piece. Because you put a lot of gilding, it's a better piece. If it's a better piece, you're going to put it in the hands of one of the better artists in your factory. It's just that simple. Um, quality attracts quality in that sense. So this was a piece that was probably more expensive to make, um, a higher level of artistry when it was created in the factory, and probably a higher price when the factory first sold it to whomever. I'm, I'm assuming it was an exporter um, that was in Japan that they sold it to someone who would, we consider them importers because they bring it into the US, but to the Japanese factory, this would be an exporter. And they probably got a higher price from this exporter, who in turn probably got a higher price from the retailer they sold it to. So regardless, I was very happy. I got a good deal on this. And as I've mentioned before, if I can pick up little bits and pieces for people I know, especially when I get in, when I get to know a buyer, after they've bought you know a dozen items or so from me, at that point, I have a good sense of their taste. Sometimes I will even know their color preferences, um, and I'll be able to narrow things down a little tighter when it comes to picking up things. So I like to be able to do this because for me, how easy was that? 
I go into a store, the stuff is in front of me, I grab it, it's $5, fantastic. But for the buyer who's going to get it as a little thank you gift, it's something she probably doesn't have access to uh, where she lives. Even if she did have access to this sort of Satsuma porcelain, she might have to pay a legitimate retail price. This was not a legitimate retail price. This was a bargain basement price. And she might have to be the one to go through all those pieces and pick out the best one. So it's it's win-win. I've still got Audie hair up my nose. I love that cat, but of course it's summer, so he's shedding pretty heavily, and he's doing most of it on me. All right, same booth. I found something interesting, and let's take a look at this, because this is something that it takes a particular collecting expertise to identify. All right, same booth. I was over here looking at another shelf and saw this. There are a set of little tin plates. Uh, they are made by the Ponytail Company, and Ponytail has actually put their logo on it. So what is so special about the Ponytail Company? Well, when I tell you, you're going to recognize it right away from these images. They did are the original cases for Mattel's Barbie dolls. Their thing was images of teenage girls. Now, condition is not great, but not bad on these. Four for five dollars. I'm going to think about it. I would be taking a chance doing this. But that is the sort of thing that might find a home specifically with early Barbie collectors who will recognize the name, the logo, right away. So, still going to think about it because it is a little bit of a chance, and frankly, I just got here. There may be many more deals just around the corner, but yeah, maybe I'll come back for it. So, I know most of you know that I deal uh, in antique dolls, uh, vintage dolls. Uh, my particular interest is the very early fashion dolls, um, Barbie and the Barbie clones from the late 50s when Barbie came out through maybe the mid 60s when the market was no longer uh, dominated by the, uh, the better quality dolls. A lot of very inexpensive imports were coming in. That's my particular area of expertise. That's how I was able to very easily identify those little ponytail tin dishes. No idea what they would have been used for. I am thinking they were probably play dishes for a child. Um, it's the only thing that really makes sense to me. But Ponytail is the company made the early Barbie cases. They also made some early Barbie accessories, like um, there was a little a le um, a vinyl. I was about to say leather. It's not faux leather. It's vinyl, uh, like a Barbie diary, and little Barbie accessories that were registered with Mattel. They were using the Barbie images and the Barbie logos, as well as their own ponytail logo. So this is a company that is known to vintage Barbie collectors. I did not go back for those little plates. It's, it was a good price, but very often when you're dealing with Barbies, uh, there's a bit of a disconnect with the Barbies and Mattel exclusive products and then some of the other products that might have been manufactured um, with Mattel's blessing, sold under the Barbie name, the Barbie logo, um, they're not always as valuable. So it can sometimes be a crapshoot. I may go back eventually, grab those little plates, 
see how well they clean up, and then throw them in my vintage Barbie stash to eventually deal with them, you know, among my Barbie uh, buyers. But for the moment, as I mentioned when I was filming, I had just gotten there, and frankly, there were so many other goodies that I just never went back for them. So let's get on to some of the different goodies. This is another booth, the one, the one I'm about to show you. I generally do not actually go into that booth, but I see the bookcase that's adjacent to the aisle, and I will always glance into it because I have occasionally found some interesting pieces there. And today was just jackpot day. So let's take a look. Well, this is another booth that I don't come into very often. I usually pay attention when I pass by this bookcase because it's right on the aisle and this tends to be where I have found interesting items, which I have found again. $10. This is a German piece here. Let me get my hand out of the way so you can see. It's a syrup pitcher with a cover. Condition is really good. What I like about this piece is this is something that's going to appeal to a lot of collectors, including collectors of American country with that wonderful red, white, and blue. But it's probably also going to strongly appeal to the collectors of hand-painted European porcelain from this period. $10, I really think this is a good deal, especially because of that cover. And that is going to sell this piece. Now, I've seen these pieces before. I've actually handled these pieces before. It's a syrup pitcher. And you can tell by that odd-shaped lid. Uh, the lid goes over the top of the pitcher, so it's shaped to include that, that long little piece that covers the spout. Syrup pitcher. Um, those are really popular pieces. For some reason, people really love that wonderful little lid. Um, I have not unwrapped that, so I have not checked. At one point in the video, I said it was German, which leads me to believe I turned it over, saw a mark, but didn't film the mark. Um, these are, in general, European pieces. This was a European design. You saw it in, um, in German pieces, Bavarian pieces, Czech pieces, and that's about it. So um, maybe these are just people who like their syrup. I don't know. But very specific design, and it's specific to a small corner of the world. I like that piece because in addition to the fact that it's a syrup pitcher, and those are very collectible to begin with, I had actually decided when I went into Bedford today that I would be specifically looking to see if I could get some American country pieces, because that is a, a segment of my, my buying population through my Etsy shop that I tend to neglect, and I shouldn't. Whenever I have come up with nice American country pieces, boy, they sell instantly. There are American country collectors out there. And as I've mentioned a couple of times, I'm sure, two of my friends decorate their homes in American country style. It's not my style, but their homes are beautiful, and comfortable. Uh, the comfort is the thing that comes across immediately. You know, these are places you just go in and say, oh, I can curl up in that chair. Um, and they're lovely. Uh, really is not me, but I can absolutely appreciate it when I'm a guest in one of these homes. I 
do see a lot of American country items. Part of the problem is they tend to be expensive uh, because they're popular around here. In my area, that's what people like. This is South Central Pennsylvania. It's not, you know, Manhattan where people are looking for more elegant, upscale decorating styles. Now, around here, comfortable and homey is what counts. So those pieces tend to sell well here to the local population. Consequently, the prices are pretty high. Also, I tend to be very picky when it comes to style and quality. A lot of pieces, pieces in the American country style uh, are pretty enough, but you know they're not meeting my standard for quality. They're not meeting my standard for the execution of the design um, or whatever, uh, because I don't want to offer my buyers something that I wouldn't buy myself. So I want to make sure it's a good deal. But I was determined that today I was going to go out of my way to look for American country pieces. And that picture, even though it is not American, and it's not even really country, although maybe it is, maybe that's what German country looks like. It does hit all of the hot buttons for American country design. The very simple style of the floral design, the red, white, and blue, absolutely. And so I think that picture is going to have a couple of markets. The, the people who are specifically looking for a syrup picture, and there are a lot of people out there, I guess pancakes are wildly popular, and I think it's going to have a lot of appeal for the American country collectors as well. So I thought that was an awfully good deal. Um, that was $10. So, you know, that's the sort of the top of my, my price point. But I, I would have considered it a very good deal at $15, $16, $18. Dollars. I still would have considered it a bargain because you don't see pieces like this. And when you do, you don't see them in perfect condition. You don't see them with the lid and you don't see them with such pretty designs. So yeah, that was sort of a no brainer, but yes, the top of my price point set. But while I was there, and this always happens to me, if I find one good deal in a booth, I look around to see if there are more. And I did find another one. And this one really surprised me. So take a look. Well, same booth as that little German covered syrup pitcher. What we have here is a Japan teapot. Let's see. It's very interesting. This one has two little latches. And of course, the little divot the little latches fit into. Very nice, good condition. Remember, with teapots, you want to check the spout. If there's going to be damage, that's where you're going to find it first. Then you check the little knobs on the top, the handles. This is a wonderful piece. It's just so bold, so unusual. And the thing I like about this is it has a wonderful European country vibe to it. That does not look like traditional Japanese decoration, but it is marked. We know it's Japan. That looks very much like European country, German country, Swiss country, even Scandinavian country style design. At $6, oh, thank you so much. That Japan teapot really, um, I sort of shook my paradigms. The design is not what I expect from a Japanese piece or a Japan piece. And, <coughs> excuse me, we've talked about um, how I use those terms. 
when a piece is Japanese, and when I refer to it as Japanese, it's because it's not necessarily from Japan. Sometimes a Japanese piece will come from China, from Hong Kong, whatever. It's because the style is one of the classic Japanese styles, like the Satsuma, or, you know, Imari, or Kutani, some of the, the classic Japanese uh, styles. When I say Japan, it's because it came from Japan. Therefore, it can be in a, a wide variety of styles because the pieces made in Japan for export were very often made in European styles. Um, uh, the beautiful Nippon pieces that I've gotten in the past with these big fat cabbage roses and so on, very European, doesn't, uh, it doesn't come anywhere near the Japanese aesthetic. So Japan as opposed to Japanese, and that's how I use the term. This particular teapot, it not only was not a Japanese style, but it was not a style I'm used to seeing in Japanese import pieces. No, it really looked European country. And if I had not actually seen the Made in Japan mark, I probably wouldn't have believed it. I would have said this was uh, a German country piece, Swiss country, um, possibly even Scandinavian country, because it's using um, the floral designs and the colors that are common in those pieces. So this was an unusual piece. Really good condition. I couldn't find any flaws or damage. And only $6, and that is a good size teapot, too. So I was very happy to get that. Um, that, boy, that pleased me. So next time I go into Bedford, I'm going to have to take a look around that booth again. Um, next up, this. All right. I was going over to, um, to one of Paul's booths. I had seen something I wanted in a locked cabinet. I went back to the counter where the register is to get someone to come over and open the cabinet for me. And as I was coming back, I just walked past the booth and this caught my eye. Well, I was just walking past and saw a really pretty little creamer. Uh, the price is what drew me in on this, a dollar, and we are in good condition. No damage. It doesn't look like the handle's been re-glued. We've got no chips. Um, we have a piece of tape that says France. So I'm thinking there must be a mark underneath this piece of tape. But it really doesn't matter because it's a very pretty picture and it's only a dollar. So we're taking it. And the reason I was walking past is here is one of Paul's booths. And I was heading back. Let's see if we can get this without the reflection. $19 for this set. Very pretty. Uh, if the condition is as good as it looks, I'm taking it. Even though at a price this high, it means I will have to sell it at cost. But the fact is, I'd much rather my buyers get it than somebody else's buyers get it. So, yeah, I'll take it home with me just to keep somebody else from getting it. Doesn't that sound awful? But really, it's just to make sure that my buyers get the pretty pieces. This was just a great little creamer, but it wasn't the creamer so much that caught my eye as the price. For a dollar... Oh yeah, absolutely. It could have been a considerably less great creamer, and I still would have thought it was a nice bargain. But if in fact it is French, and that little piece of tape on the bottom did say France, if it is French, then it's even more of a bargain because French porcelain commands good prices. I have no idea why. In my personal opinion, 
French porcelain is no better than anyone else's porcelain, but for some reason, the collector's market has decided that French porcelain is fine porcelain. But, you know, we've talked about that too with regard to Japanese pieces. Why a, a, a piece of Japanese porcelain will sit right next to a piece of German or Czech porcelain, and the German or Czech porcelain will be 10 to 20% higher. No idea. It makes it good for me because I'll grab the Japanese piece any day because I see them as comparable quality. Um, in fact, sometimes the Japanese piece is better quality, but the market says, no, we'd rather have the Czech or the Austrian or the German or, in this case, the French. So, terrific to find that deal. And then, of course, I went back over to um, the piece that I was really looking for, and that was the salt, pepper, and little mustard set from Paul's Booth. Now, this little salt, pepper, mustard set was in a locked cabinet, as I mentioned. Uh, $19. Paul likes prices that end in nine. Um, he'll do $9, $19, $39, dollars whatever This was a, a good price for the piece, but it's a high price given uh, what I can usually get these pieces for. Now, one of the reasons I'm able to sell those pieces at um, considerably less than they go for on eBay, for example, is because I do get better deals. This one, um, I'm going to have to figure out what I can sell it for and break even. Mostly because that was too pretty to leave behind. Uh, by the way, when I examined the set, First thing I did was open that little mustard pot and the little porcelain spoon is completely intact. And that's, boy, that's tricky because those spoons usually are broken. So, um, definitely made it worth the $19. But I would much rather take a piece like that, uh, even if I have to sell it at a break-even price because it, I put it in the hands of my buyers rather than letting somebody else put it in the hands of their buyers. But it's good for your shop when you sell online or if you sell in a brick and mortar facility. If you can actually get some superior pieces and sell them at decent prices, uh, and we'll see, like I said, we'll see what I can manage to turn that around for. But it brings buyers in. Someone will get a good deal. They will remember it. They will come back. And that is a really nice set. And so, yeah, I was being selfish about it. No, my buyers get it. But as I say, you, you need to take care of your buyers and you need to be able to offer them something they're not going to get somewhere else. Now, of course, this is something they most certainly can get somewhere else if they want to pay $60 for it. So what I'm going to be able to do is offer it for less. That's, that's how I'm going to be able to ice out the competition. Thank you very much. All right, so that's all we have time for today. In fact, I'm afraid we may have gone over time a little. Um, have a terrific day. I've got plenty more. I hit one booth today where I got nine items for an average price of $1.40 each. So I'll have that video coming up. Meantime, have a terrific day and I'll see you all tomorrow.